Now, maybe you've not heard of George Ballas. Maybe you have. But you certainly have likely heard of his invention. Hey, it's Don Skaggs again for Empowered Inventing, the one place where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom to turn them into real things like products and businesses. Now today, I want to talk to you about an inventor named George Ballas. Now maybe you've not heard of George Ballas, maybe you have, but you certainly have likely heard of his invention. George Ballas is the inventor of the weed eater. Now, uh, how did George come up with the idea for the weed eater? Well, he was actually sitting in a car wash and he was wondering, he was watching the, uh, have you ever seen the spinning uh, uh, bristles that come down and kind of and wash your car in a, uh, uh, in a car wash? Well, he was looking, he was sitting there looking at that bristle and he got to thinking. And he was starting to wonder if uh, those bristles, like the ones that were washing his car, were they, uh, could they be applied to trimming grass? So he went home. And he started, uh, he got some fishing wire. Uh, he poked though, that fishing wire through holes of a tin can. There's a great picture of him holding this just nasty looking old tin can with, with look, it looks like, uh, I don't know how he poked the holes, but it looks like he took a screwdriver and poked holes in the side and was putting the fishing line through. And it, there's a, a great photo uh, of that. So anyway, he, he took this, he built his Franken type. So uh, his, his ugly prototype for his proof of concept and, and the rest is history. He started his company and actually his sales, of course, flourished. Of course, you know, we've always seen the end of this. You know, hey, weed eaters are everywhere. Uh, so his, his company flourished for a decade, started his own company with his invention, and then later sold his company to another company called Emerson Electric. Kind of like I did with my company when, when I, although I didn't do the weed eater, I was in a niche business. So anyway, um, in the medical industry. So, so uh, the thing about George, the thing I want you to get with this is that everybody starts here. Everybody starts and, you know, we kind of think of ourselves as inventors and we're sitting in the car wash and we're looking at the spinning bristles and we're, we're saying to ourselves, huh, I wonder if that could be used for this other thing over here. I wonder if it could solve this other problem. And we, uh, uh, we, we apply that, we build a prototype. George, the inventor of the weed eater, was in the same place that you and I have sat many a times with coming up with a new idea and trying to bring it to fruition, trying to, to turn it into something, a real product or a real business. And, and that's what George did. He turned them into both, a product and a business that he ended up selling. So uh, the problem, though, I see is a lot of people only see the successful people when they're successful. You didn't know them. A lot of times you don't hear about their backstories. You don't hear about the Sarah Blakely starting in her apartment, now a billionaire, uh, owner of Spanx, and, and, and you, you, don't, you don't see her starting in her apartment. You don't see her uh, just kind of scrounging and, and trying to figure this out with uh, limited resources. You don't see that part usually. And uh, a lot of people kind of get that mindset of, oh, just, you know, that little independent inventor, he just can't get ahead. He just can't really make it in this world. You can't compete with these big companies. You can't do all this. And I say that's a lot of baloney, and I know that. Number one, did you know that 80% of millionaires in America are first-generation millionaires? They are the first generation of their family to be rich. They didn't inherit their wealth. They didn't just, oh, they didn't win a lottery. Uh, they, no, they earned it. They, they did the George Ballas route. They, they, they took an idea, be it an idea for a, a product as an inventor or an idea for a business, and they started something and, and they earned it. So, but we tend to only see the end of that, not the hard work, and it is hard work to get there. But it's totally worth the hard work to get there. 
But the truth is, is that you can actually get there from here. You really can. You can be, uh, uh, you, you might just be sitting in that car wash and seeing those spinning bristles and, and you just have that idea. But actually, you can get there. You can get to where George Ballas became from where you're sitting now because you guys were both sitting in, in the same seat at one time. So how do you get from that scrappy startup, that person with an idea, that, uh, that independent inventor, that one person with a tin can and the fishing wire, how do you get from there to, uh, to the successful part? How do you do that? Well, well, number one, you have to start where you are. Uh, I had the opportunity one time of actually meeting Chris Gardner, and this is, if you don't know that name, uh, you probably know the movie, if you've seen the movie Pursuit of Happiness. If you've not seen that movie, by the way, I highly recommend it. It is a great movie. Now, it's not an inventor movie, but it is about, it is about business, it is about uh, a, a struggle. Uh, from just just humble beginnings to actually making something and doing something and that's the story of Chris Gardner I had the opportunity to actually get to meet him and uh, uh, hear him speak and I actually got to meet him in person and, and, and uh, he's a pretty amazing guy now not only does he have the movie A Pursuit, Pursuit of Happiness he actually has the book that he wrote but he has another lesser known book called Start Where You Are and I love that title because you do, you have to start where you are. A lot of people do not make it to success because they think where they're at, they can't get from where they're at to where they need to be. You, you, uh, you, you have to start where you are. They don't start because they think, well, where I am, I can't start. No, you start where you are. Or you think you have to be somewhere, you have to reach this level of something uh, before you can actually start. No, start where you are. Another thing is that you don't need a big boost of money. And this is a lot of times when people don't start where they are because they're not, uh, 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 they think they, oh, I have to have $10,000. I have to have $5,000. I have to have $100,000 to do this. No, you don't need a big boost of money uh, in the start. It's grit over greenbacks. Uh, it's doing what it takes. That is much, much more important. I have seen companies, startup companies, startup inventors, startup entrepreneurs. I have seen these people, and uh, I've seen some that were given just a really large amount of money. And you think, well, they've got plenty of money. Surely they're going to just take right off because they've got all this money in the beginning. And they languished. I've seen other companies that were just counting coins out of couch cushions, and they were trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to make the next week? How are we going to get through this next week? How are we going to get through this next month? And those are the ones that I see make it. Those are the ones that I see really take off. Why? Because it's grit over greenbacks. Now, uh, money can actually get in the way at the start. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive. It doesn't sound like it makes sense, but it's really true. If you have too much money in the start, you won't, it won't force you to rely on the things you really have to rely on to become successful. And, and sometimes that is, uh, you know, the coins out of the couch cushions. So, uh, so you don't need a big boost of money at the, uh, at the start. Another thing is that you need people and you need wisdom and you need diligence. And, and, and if you've heard, if you've, if you've done any of the classes, if you've been to any of the meetings, if you've heard me uh, in some of these videos before, you've probably heard me tell about this, is, is three very important things for inventors and entrepreneurs is, is people, money, and wisdom. You need people, you need those connections. You have to have connections to other people. Now, sometimes that's through uh, social media uh, outlets like LinkedIn. Now, don't think Facebook's going to do it for you. Now, that might be a good B2C marketing uh, marketplace for you. Uh, but really, LinkedIn, if you're going to do social media and it's, and it's B2B or you're connecting to other business people, LinkedIn is the place. I highly recommend LinkedIn. Uh, but beyond that, you want to do beyond, way beyond the... Uh, 
uh, the social media part. You, uh, you, you want to be able to really connect people. Look them in the eye, shake, shake their hand if, if, if entirely possible. So make connections to other people. I highly recommend getting involved with a local inventor group if you're an inventor. Uh, uh, there's, they're, they're all over the country and uh, you can always go to kyinventors.org and uh, we have online me meetings if there's not a meeting close to you. Now, because people are important. Another thing is wisdom. You have to learn from those people that you meet. Uh, those people learn from the mistakes that they have made, the ones they've recovered on. I've heard successful people before say, we, we're, we're not really successful. We just survived all the mistakes that we made on our way to success. So you need people, you need wisdom, and you need diligence. Now, that is diligence is doing what you promised yourself you were going to do. Maybe when you were motivated, you said, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. I am going to really take off with this, Don, and because you were motivated. Maybe you watched a video. Maybe you went to a meeting. Maybe you took a class, but, but you're motivated now, and you're ready to take off. But in, And at that time, you need to sit down and make yourself some promises on purpose and on paper. You need to write these things down. Say, I'm going, to, okay, I'm promising myself I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to take these steps and I want to get from, from, from the George Ballas sitting in the, uh, uh, in, in the car wash to the actual product that becomes wildly successful in my own business. Uh, so it takes diligence to do that because later you're not going to feel like it or you're going to forget what you promised yourself. So you need to follow through and do what you, and sometimes it just, again, it's grit over greenbacks. So, uh, so anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, help us uh, share this with other people, help us to, support, uh, to build our tribe, uh, support what we're doing. And uh, I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, maybe one of our online classes, or on the next video.